In this video, we're going to show you the worst employees on Undercover Boss. So without further ado, let's get started. I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know back here. Okay. Okay? Okay. Because when it comes to this, there ain't a damn thing that I do not know how to do in these four walls, okay? Okay. Okay, but you gotta do exactly as I say. I wanna learn. In an episode of Undercover Boss, the CEO of Buffalo Wings and Rings, Nader Masda, decided to investigate what was happening in his franchise locations. While he found heartwarming stories of dedicated employees and personal growth, there was one person who stood out as the worst employee during Masada's undercover mission. This employee, named Wes, was the kitchen manager of a Buffalo Wings and Rings restaurant at Bardstown, Kentucky. As soon as Masada disguised himself, he noticed Wes's domineering attitude. Wes had no idea that the person he was dealing with was actually the CEO and he was about to face the consequences of his bullying behavior. In the kitchen, Wes proudly boasted about ruling with an iron fist and believed that fear was a form of respect. Masto was shocked and couldn't believe the toxic environment that Wes had created. Wes even had a derogatory nickname for Masta, calling him Charmin to mock his perceived weakness. If they do, there's consequences. Hit them where it hurts, their pocket. It's upsetting to me when I hear Wes speak. I'm not around. It's a classic definition of a bully. After observing Wes's inappropriate behavior and hearing his offensive comments, Masta's desire to confront the situation grew stronger. Masta recognized the importance of taking action in order to create a safe and respectful environment for everyone involved. If Wes's behavior were left unchanged, it would have devastating consequences for the company's reputation. Every time you drop an order and you're done, yeah. do what you could never do on prom night. Tap it twice. Well, you've probably been a guy who's been walked on a time or two in his life. In a powerful meeting at Paul Brown Stadium, Masta confronted Wes about his bullying tactics. He made it clear that he would not tolerate such behavior in his company and demanded that the franchise owner take immediate action and fire Wes. Masta wanted to make it clear that bullying and abuse would not be allowed in his company. I'm not gonna allow anybody to be bullied or be uncomfortable like I was. That is not the culture we're trying to set. Although Wes represented the worst of Buffalo Wings and Rings, the episode also showed the power of transformation and redemption. Mazda, no longer undercover, addressed other instances of mistreatment within his franchise locations. For example, in Chicago, he discovered that employees did not understand when doctors provided excuses for absences, showing a lack of compassion and empathy. Mazda was determined to fix these issues and decided to establish a scholarship fund for employee education. He started by awarding a scholarship to a deserving worker named Amber. In addition to the scholarship, he surprised Amber with a new car to replace her old high mileage vehicle. Mazda's journey as an undercover boss also brought positive changes to the lives of dedicated employees. He was impressed by Dave, a dishwasher and marketing ambassador in his Cincinnati store, who worked hard and showed commitment. Mazda rewarded Dave by offering him more hours, cook training, and a $20,000 retirement account. Mazda's genuine appreciation for Dave's efforts demonstrated the positive impact of recognizing and valuing employees. I've never met somebody I didn't like. I feel official now. I don't even know this guy that I'm gonna be training and I already like him as a friend. He's already part of the family. Through Mazda's inspiring journey on Undercover Boss, the importance of creating a supportive work environment and fostering respect was highlighted. By exposing the worst employee and taking swift action, Mazda showed his dedication to nurturing a workplace where everyone feels valued and protected. The GM in the store, is he's the coach. He's got all of his players underneath him. He's got to make sure the, the, the entire team works good together. I'm going to listen to the way he conducts himself and how he talks to his staff. In an episode of the TV show Undercover Boss, Hooters president and CEO Kelby Brooks wanted to learn more about how his company was operating. He hoped to address problems with the brand and declining sales, as well as investigate allegations of mistreatment of women that Hooters had faced. Brooks took on the identity of a regular employee named Scott Archer and worked at a Hooters restaurant in Dallas, Texas. Hi, Scotty, how are you? Dude, we gotta get rocking and rolling. All right, so, okay. that's your shirt. Get changed, and then uh, we will hook up in two shakes of lamb skin. Brooks did tasks like washing dishes, taking out the trash, and cleaning tables. However, he struggled to keep up with the fast pace and broke some mugs, 
leading the restaurant manager David to decide he wouldn't hire Scott Archer. Next, Brooks joined a street team in downtown Dallas to promote Hooters by giving out free wings and attracting customers. Some women expressed concerns about how women were portrayed, while others focused on less important aspects of the restaurant. Brooks was troubled by this feedback and started thinking about Hooters' image and reputation. The most shocking part of the episode happened when Brooks worked with Jimbo, the general manager of a Hooters restaurant in South Arlington, Texas. Jimbo organized a degrading lineup where he judged the appearance of the female servers, including their hair, makeup, and outfits. Brooks was disgusted by this behavior. To make matters worse, Jimbo made the servers eat a plate of beans with their hands tied behind their backs, creating a disrespectful and demeaning environment. The first girl that finishes her plate of beans will go home. You cannot use your hands. Come on, girl, who wants to go home? Brianna, how are they, baby? Oh, they look tasty. Outraged, Brooks immediately contacted the franchise owner to report the incident. The undercover experience took a positive turn when Brooks observed Marcy, a female manager at a Hooters restaurant in Fort Worth. Marcy showed compassion and acted like a mother figure to the staff, creating a supportive work environment. This made Brooks realize the importance of having a female manager who could address the concerns and needs of the employees. After finishing his undercover work, Brooks returned to the corporate office and arranged a meeting with the senior leadership to address the issues he discovered. He invited the people he worked with during his undercover operation to share their experiences and provide feedback. Amanda and Brittany, the servers from the street team, were given opportunities to contribute to the company's marketing efforts. Dave, a dedicated employee, received recognition for his hard work, and Brooks donated $50,000 to Operation Homefront in Dave's name. Marcy, the compassionate manager, was rewarded with the family vacation of her choice. Finally, Brooks confronted Jimbo, expressing his disappointment with the disrespectful behavior he had witnessed. Although Jimbo initially defended himself, Brooks made it clear that he wouldn't want his own daughters to work in such conditions. This confrontation served as a wake-up call for Jimbo, highlighting the need for him to change his management style. I'm Kobe Brooks, the president and CEO of Hooters of America. The way that you interact with the girls, quite frankly, is inappropriate. Because our hourly shift supervisors are in a leadership role, they set the tone for all the employees in the restaurant. We want them to have a great positive attitude, and we want them to be really focused on delivering warm and friendly service. Sarah Beidorf, the chief brand officer at Boston Market, went undercover at one of the company's restaurants to gain firsthand insights into the operations and the employee experience. Little did she know that she would encounter the worst employee in the history of the show, Ronnie, who would be fired on the spot for his shocking behavior. So we're going to be working together today, yeah? You excited? Yeah. I'm a little nervous. But hey, excited. Don't worry about it. You have a great teacher. Ronnie was a shift supervisor at the Boston Market Outpost in Duluth, Georgia. He openly expressed his disdain for customers during his interactions with Bidorf, who was disguised as a waitress participating in a reality show. He went on a rant about hating customers, calling them selfish and demanding. Unbeknownst to him, his words were being captured on camera, and his derogatory remarks about the very people the company served sent shockwaves through Bidor. Standard procedure is to greet the customer as they walk in and say, hello, welcome to Boston Market, you know, blah, blah, blah. Because we have to make customers, you know, on a pedestal. As Bidorf listened to Ronnie's disrespectful comments, she realized that his attitude was completely contradictory to the values of Boston Market. The company prides itself on providing excellent customer service and ensuring a positive dining experience. Ronnie's toxic attitude towards customers threatened to undermine the company's reputation and values. Ronnie kept referencing that this is the way we do it because corporate tells us to. That concerns me a little. Customers will literally sit here and take about 500 napkins and then just throw them all over the floor. Deeply disturbed by Ronnie's behavior, Bidorf took a moment to compose herself before deciding to reveal her true identity to him. She expressed her disappointment in his actions and emphasized the importance of customers and the success of the business. Bidorf made it clear that Ronnie's attitude was unacceptable and he was promptly sent home for the day, his future at the company hanging in the balance. There is no restaurant competition show. Oh my god, really? Yes. Oh. I got you saying a bunch of things about our customers. Yeah, I did. I'm angry and I'm heartbroken. God. Even after learning that he had been disrespectful to a high-ranking executive, Ronnie failed to show remorse for his behavior. He defended his hatred for people, claiming that it wasn't wrong to feel that way. However, the consequences of his actions were inevitable.
Bydorf recommended to the branch manager that Ronnie be fired, and her advice was promptly followed. Ronnie's termination was a significant moment in the history of Undercover Boss. It was the first time a participant had been fired from the show. Now, have you ever witnessed an employee on Undercover Boss who got promoted for his impressive performance? You won't want to miss out on our video, Best Employees on Undercover Boss. Click here to watch the video.